Faker is resting because he has some pain in his arm. So he's okay, but they don't want to further complicate his medical condition. So we will be seeing the Challengers mid player Kobe play in his stead. Clean 2 0, very one sided games. And I got to say, oh. Valdez, this one was not about Kobe. No. And Fate here, he is going to take Zayas out just as oh, a parting God. gift. <laughs> Goodbye. So hold on, hold on. So T1 just got 2 0 I think we really do see how important Faker is to T1. And man, I, I, I have no words. As BDD moving on down, Hook is going to connect there onto Cuz. As now Carrier taking so much damage, he will be taken out. Hobie as well is going to explode, and somehow it's another kill for the Bane as well. As owner is running away, BDD finds the flash incinerate. Look at how fast he's going. It's a double kill. What? Aiming's on four kills on Bane at six minutes, making a triple. Oh, goodness me. It could not have gone worse for T1. So I would say mostly a lot of confidence is gone, and uh, yeah, maybe that's because their their little Papa Faker ain't there. They don't have the Papa. Now with Faker back in the starting lineup after 31 days, he's back after his wrist injury, but is he at 100%? Glacial Prison comes in, aiming's going to be interrupted by Ona. Absolutely beautiful play now. Carrier taking some damage, but the Feather Storm's going to save Gumiushi Lahens has to go golden, and he's not going to be able to get himself out of it. Kane is going to be the first to go down in the fight, and T1 are just juggling the aggro gorgeously. Ko's going to be the next victim here as T1 are looking for match point. They are looking for no mercy, and they want to head towards the final. They leave the Baron. There's a black board from Gumiushi. The cage is down. Bidini avoids the Feather Storm, and it does not matter. Gumiushi grabs the double. The next turret will be taken down, and T1 will deny again tomorrow and qualify for the world championship. All right, before we get into Faker's remarkable return, just a quick reminder to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next great story that we're helping to tell. Cheers. T1's 2022 season ended in heartbreak. They lost a nail-biter of a final to DRX in the biggest match of the year, where the inexperience of their young roster really showed. But when fans and analysts started pointing fingers, a lot of the blame was put on the team's veteran and star, Faker. Many people believe that 2022 was Faker's last real chance at a world championship, and his failure to lead his team across the finish line left question marks looming over the entire roster's future. But despite this, T1 decided to stick together ahead of the 2023 season. And once the spring split rolled around, they still looked like a top team. That's going to be end of Peanut, and these Nexus turrets are not long for the world. Another the kill comes in as Doran, he goes back to base and watches it explode. Chovy goes golden on the fountain. Faker's gonna join him there right as the Nexus goes down. T1, 2-0 revenge. Maybe they'll play with their food as well. Looking for a little dive onto the fountain. <laughs> They're trying to bait in Faker and they will take down the Nexus in time. Bunch of good nature buddies as 16 to one is the final kill score as well. Easiest game for T1 as they skated to the victory. As now Deft is bearing down the wrong direction here towards T1, who are just taking all of his stuff. Oh, Showmaker just thrown into the blender. Speaking of which, Kumiyushi now under the turret, he's gonna die, but so is Deft. And the game is now done. T1 will wrap it up two to one. Faker's team dominated the spring group stage, only dropping a single match. And in playoffs, they kept up that form all the way to the grand finals. But that was where they fell short. As in front is the Zion, he's going to stand there, but look at this turret, it just evaporates. Oh! A massive cue from Doran, and it is the man that played so well in games one and two that's coming back here in game three to dominate T1. Ona down to his GA once again, pays. He's down very, very low, but now the Nexus will be in the sights of Gen G. They couldn't take them down at all throughout the rest of it. And now, on the blood of T1, Pays has paved the golden road here in spring 2023. And when Faker and T1 attended MSI, their form continued to crumble. And as T1 falls to the lower bracket, JDG guarantees themselves the highest finish. They will be waiting in that grand final. It was supposed to be EDG, it was supposed to be Gen G, it was supposed to be T1, but here at MSI, BLG stands strong and 
defiance of all expectations, they move to the final. Now, for most teams, a top four finish at MSI would be respectable, but this is Faker we're talking about. By his and T1 standards, this result was a disappointment. The team looked shaky, and some people began questioning whether Faker was holding back some of T1's younger stars. In the summer split, T1 started strong, with three wins in their first four matches, but behind the scenes, Faker was struggling. After their win against Bryon, Faker began feeling some discomfort in his arm. He continued playing matches through weeks 3 and 4, but things turned from bad to worse. On July 5th, T1 announced that Faker's condition hadn't improved, so he went to a hospital to get it checked out. Fortunately, they didn't find any major issues, but the superstar mid laner was going to have to sit on the bench for a while in order to recover. So T1 called Poby up from their academy team to replace Faker in the meantime. Now, T1 has a long history of fielding incredible backup mid laners who developed in Faker's shadow. Some even thought that now was the perfect time for Faker to make way for a talented up-and-comer like Poby. But without Faker, T1 looked lost. Clean 2-0, very one-sided games. And I gotta say, Valdez, this one was not about Poby. No. And Fate here, he is gonna take Zayas out just as oh, a parting God. gift. <laughs> Goodbye. BDD moving on down. Hook is going to connect there onto Kuz. Is now Carrier taking so much damage, he will be taken out. Poby as well is gonna explode, and somehow it's another kill for the Bane as well. His owner is running away. BDD finds the flash incinerate. Look at how fast he's going. It's a double kill. What? Aiming's on four kills on Bane at six minutes, make it a triple. Oh, goodness me, it could not have gone worse for T1. So I would say mostly a lot of confidence uh, is gone. Is very upset. And um, that yeah, maybe that's because they're, they're little and Papa like Faker in there. In they don't have the Papa. The entire team looked disjointed. It felt like Zayas and Poby were constantly getting caught out, and Karia wasn't playing like the clutch player everyone knew he was. Now, it's no secret that T1 has struggled with nerves in the past, but Faker was always there to keep them calm when they needed it most. His veteran presence was a big part of what helped them remain strong contenders in the past few years. Eight months prior, they were on the world's final stage, but without Faker, T1 was spiraling out of control. They had lost seven of their last eight matches and just barely secured a spot in the playoffs. And for an org as storied as T1, that simply wasn't good enough. They were a shadow of their former selves, and fans saw the whole situation as a disaster. Keep in mind that this is the same fan base that sent funeral wreaths to T1's headquarters back in 2020 and had publicly mocked their own players for not performing well. But despite the endless distractions that the team faced outside the server, they got a massive morale boost when Faker decided to return ahead of their week nine matches. T1 added that the decision was made based on medical advice but some fans worried that Faker might be rushing back too soon. Nobody wanted to see him re-aggravate his injury, especially if T1 weren't contenders for playoffs. But even though the fans weren't expecting much, T1 started to pick up some wins. That's gonna be the end of it, flashing on top Why of- Where does there he go? <laughs> Tay and he just disappears as Faker will pick up another media vote on his way out. We are done here, 2-0 as T1 will take down the series. There's the Nation's Grass. Will is gonna flash to try and get himself out. His closer is kind of free hitting. There's an Empress Divide, but it's only on to clear. Who dives forward? Snip, snip, everyone. That is gonna be at least one of the kills, but it's only Faker that has fallen so far. Carrier limping away. There's a yes. the big old Q. Riot, are you here? And uh, Zeus is gonna be able to pick that one comfortably up. And Owner is just gonna smash back clear. This is gorgeous play from T1 as they split the aggro beautifully. The Nature's Grass does come through. Counter-Strike trying to work out, but the Dragon Rage kick is just fantastic. Kyle still manages to get in there and provide onto two, but now that is not a tool that is left available. And clear, we've seen this one before. Yeah, you might be able to kill him, but you're not even able to do that this time around as T1, the third time of asking, will claim the Nexus and make it a 2-1 over Live Sandbox here today. Faker didn't look outstanding, but T1 got the job done and ended the final week of the regular season with two wins, giving them some much needed confidence heading into playoffs. Still, T1 had a long way to go if they wanted to compete with the LCK's top rosters. Sure, they won a couple matches against some weaker teams, but playoffs are a completely different beast. 
Death trying to find some autos, but look at that Q3! And Zayas will not be silenced! The Dust Blade makes him untargetable, and Canyon is doing everything that he can to escape, but he's not going to be able to stop this Nexus from exploding as T1 looked dominant in the later game and will take down D+, the first game of this best of five series. And it's a double once again. I think Zayas might get a POG for this particular game as it's looking a little bit like a 3-1 for T1 as they take down the inhibitor. They'll take down the Nexus turrets and they are moving on in the playoffs. Once again, it's a five game series. And once again, they're the team that comes out on top. Unless that Whirling Death does way more than I expect, but it does not. Aiming's doing some damage here to Gumiyushi, but the Nexus is the one that's gonna go down and T1 one, the underdogs from fifth place now up against first place. They take the win and stay in the upper bracket of playoffs. Faker and T1 were beginning to look like themselves again, and their win against KT put them in the upper bracket final against Gen G with a spot at Worlds on the line. But Gen G were T1's kryptonite all season long, and Faker's team just wasn't ready for the Church of Chovy. And it looks like Gen G will absorb the pressure and should be able to take down this game number four. It's a clean ace to the side of Gen G, and they'll push down and bring us to Silver Screen. Gen G will continue on this path though. They will take down the Nexus. It looks like it's Caria and Owner. They are so desperate as Gen G. Oh, here comes Guma gonna take up pace. Doesn't matter. Gen G, they're going to the finals and they have booked their ticket to Worlds. Once again, T1 fell to Gen G in a close fought series, but they still had one last chance to qualify for Worlds. And even if Faker still wasn't fully recovered, missing out on Worlds would be unthinkable. He'd never made it to Worlds in his home country, failing to do so twice before. If he missed the big stage in Seoul again, it would only add more fuel to the fire for his haters. So this time, he wasn't going to let his opportunity escape him. I, I can't oh, make a point to yeah, yeah, owner is going to twist and advance forward. BDD is going to flash away. Sapling is down, but it shouldn't find him. Faker's already flashed over. Shifts the sands. BDD tries to slow him down, but it does not work. It is going to be the Baron secured. Can KT escape? Is the question. Nature is cross. Bringing Gumi Yushi's going to press the old button. There's the cleanse as well. It's beautiful. And BDD is going to be taken down. The singe also dead as Keen's just trying to keep him busy. It's a double now, and Gumi Yushi's just trying to keep them here. They're celebrating on the enemy Nexus at the end of game one. Look at these extendo beams from Gumi Yushi having a day out on the Zeri here in this one. They take down the remaining turret. Yeah, Carrier is going to suffer a death. This is his first one for the series, though. We'll give it to him. And T1, victorious in game number one. Glacial Prison comes in. Aiming's going to be interrupted by Oda. Absolutely beautiful play. Now, Carrier taking some damage, but the Featherstorm's going to save Gumi Yushi. Lahens has to go golden, and he's not going to be able to get himself out of it. Kane is going to be the first to go down in the fight, and T1 are just juggling the aggro gorgeously. Go's going to be the next victim here as T1 are looking for match point. They are looking for no mercy, and they want to head towards the final. They leave the Baron. There's a black forward from Gumi Yushi. The cage is down. He avoids the Featherstorm, and it does not matter. Gumi Yushi grabs the double. The Nexus turret will be taken down, and T1 will deny the reverse sweep. And they'll meet Genji again tomorrow and qualify for the World Championship. Faker and T1 fended off the reverse sweep and managed to close out the lower finals and qualify for Worlds. They may have fallen to Gen G in the grand finals, but after a year where some people questioned whether Faker still had what it took, he silenced all of his doubters. And that's why so many people consider him the GOAT. After a summer filled with pain and frustration, Faker showed us that he's still the glue that holds T1 together. <laughs> 은 크게 상관은 없지만 그래도 한국에서 어, 한국 팬분들이 응원해 주시는 그런 무대에서 경기를 하는 거는 굉장히 색다른 경험이고 좋은 경험일 것 같아서 기대하고 있습니다. T1 may not be coming into Worlds as the favorites, but they're certainly contenders. And after a season where nearly everything was against them, that's already a remarkable achievement in and of itself. This year might be Faker's last real chance to lift the Summoner's Cup on home soil. But with the unkillable Demon King in the server, it seems like just about anything is possible. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. 
for unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.